Hey guys, it's Crystal. I wanted to set up the video that you're about to watch. Um, it's a discussion on holy agreements, which is the act of entering into a divine or sacred agreement with someone else in order to manifest literally anything that we want. This is actually based on a universal principle. And in this video, I go into why this is so. And I think this is actually really important. And to my work, it is very important. A couple of nights ago, we had a holy agreement session. I held this session on Zoom. We had about 15 or 20 people. It was a very sacred circle in which we talked a little bit about holy agreements. And then we entered into a session where we all agreed for new outcomes. This was an absolutely free session, but it was private. And it was um, just for people who were truly interested. And at the end of this video, I will give you some information on how you can join if you want to be a part of a live holy agreements session facilitated by me. Uh, I will tell you how to do that, and I would love to see you there. But suffice it to say, the information, I think, in this video is life-changing, and it's life-transforming, and I think it's about time that all of us use ourselves and our life to make a positive change on this planet. We can absolutely do it, we can do it together, and I think we ought to get to it. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. Um, the holy agreement is an it's just an agreement that you make with someone else. It's almost like a spiritual contract. And it's predicated on Matthew 18, 18. Let me pull it up. I don't want to misquote. And the words of Jesus, which is not about Jesus or Christianity. It's about the eternal principle that Jesus is talking about here. And in the scripture, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything that you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Now, I went into kind of a teaching about why that's powerful. Uh, I, I explained that as from the perspective of Neville Goddard, that he regarded father in heaven as a certain thing and Jesus as a certain thing. For example, he regarded Jesus, the man, as the potential of all humanity, the potential to be an embodiment of love, the potential to be spiritually connected, the potential to perform miracles and to manifest masterfully. That was Jesus. And so Jesus's life as a human is emblematic and inspirational for you and I. Whereas Jesus, the being right? Jesus, the entity, Jesus, the Christ consciousness, that is representative of I am, the higher self of who it is that we are. The full conscious awareness of, of our soul's being, that's who Jesus is, the deity. And Father in heaven is source energy. Also, Father in heaven is the universe. The universe was created by source energy in order to facilitate all the experiences that we're currently having. Your higher self dispatched you into 3D on earth. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Dispatched you here though. And there needed to be a dimension to allow you to have this experience. There needed to be a planet. There needed to be a universe. And so the universe is the construct creator put into place. Now, this is an important scripture, mainly for the second, the, well, the second and the third sentence. The second sentence is, I tell you, that if two of you on earth agree about anything that you ask for, it will be done for you by my father in heaven. Source energy, the universe will do it for you. And the important thing to notice in this sentence is agree about anything you ask for. Your agreement is not contingent upon it being in alignment with God, although it's better if it is. It's not contingent upon it being approved by some religious organization. It can be any agreement. If two people on this planet agree on something, creator makes it happen. The universe receives the signal of that and sets about in a way known only to itself to create it for you. And this is reflected in Isaiah 45, 11, where God is saying, ask me of things to come concerning my sons. Ask me about the future. You want to know? Ask. 
God also says, and concerning the work of my hands, the creation, manifestation, concerning the work of my hands, you command me. And the reason we talked about that tonight is because people need to understand how powerful they are. You command me, says God. You two people agree upon it on earth. God's moving. God's creating it. And so tonight's session, which ended up being much more private, and that was appropriate because people came with personal things that they wanted to heal and talk about and resolve and get agreements on. Tonight's session was a purposeful entering into these holy agreements on all kinds of things. We had agreements on peace and on uh, the binding of the energy of cruelty to animals. We had agreements about personal health and issues and relationships. We had all kinds of agreements, but the fact is that we assembled together and we agreed consciously, intentionally, and so it is. And so it is. Now I got to go through, <laughs> I should talk about the process of creating an agreement with somebody else, a holy agreement, not just your regular everyday, yeah, let's have pizza tonight agreement. We're talking about holy agreements. The process is simple, but you should move through these four things. And so if, and by the way, you can make an agreement with yourself. <laughs> That's what I didn't get to talk about tonight. And I'll talk about in a little bit. But let me go over the process for you. Before you make a holy agreement about anything, you have to have a clear and untroubled heart. Jesus says, therefore, I tell you, when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. And now a little bit of dog dogma and stuff in there. The way I feel this scripture to be true is when you pray or when you enter into holy agreements, if you hold anything against anyone, an offense, a hatred, an unforgiveness, an anxiety, an anger, a grudge, or if there's anything inside of you that might be keeping you from being able to participate in this divine manifestation, release it or forgive that person which is to say, consider them from love, consider them as whole, consider them as worthy, consider them as good, forgive them in your heart, let it go. And source energy considers you whole, considers you good, considers you as forgiven and as powerful. That's the first part though. So if you come into a sacred circle like we had tonight or any agreement that you make, and you guys, I hope you make some holy agreements on your own. You don't need me to do that. You've got to make sure you lay down the things that are acting as obstacles in your life. You've got to let it go because you want to become a pure instrument for spirit. Like St. Francis said, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. To be an instrument, you've got to clear the muck and the mire. And so start by releasing what you're conscious to holding on to and also what you're unconscious to because there's shadow stuff that we don't even know about, right? Give that to spirit as well. Once you have cleared your heart, then you get into envisioning and articulating what you are agreeing upon. So if you and I are agreeing upon it, I've got to be able to see it. I got to be able to understand what you're trying to create so that I can create it with you. And so we articulate that. We paint the picture of that. And in doing so, we begin to connect with the feeling of that, right? If we're, if we're, if we are agreeing to end the abuse of all animals, although we say that in a more positive way when we're agreeing, then you're talking to me about that. And I'm envisioning that for a people perish without vision, right? You got to be able to see it, feel it, know it, understand it. And then you start to feel it. And once you start feeling it, here we go. Now we're creating it. Next step after envisioning is to agree. Agree. Now, in order for an agreement to stick, to hold. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. And tonight in our session, I said, if you don't believe it, it's possible to create it. Don't agree to it. Don't contaminate the process of it with your unbelief because that's a frequency. So just what do they do in, in Catholic church? They go like this. I can't take the Eucharist. Just recuse yourself and let the people who can believe it as possible create it. Jesus said, to him who believeth, 
all things are possible. And so if we agree in belief, now we're cooking with gas. Last step is, and so it is, it's faith. It's faith. Hebrews 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What does that even mean? Oh, it's so good. The esoteric layers of sacred text, man, it's wild. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We have to conclude an agreement with faith, meaning I know that I know that I know that it is done. I vibrate in alignment with the knowledge of this. And I referenced Neville's work called Order, Then Wait. Order, Then Wait. Go to the restaurant, sit down, order your cheeseburger, and wait. That's the same as manifestation, in effect. You don't go to the restaurant and sit down, order your cheeseburger, and then worry the entire time whether the cook is cooking it or whether the waiter is going to bring it back. No. You sit and you wait. You know they're cooking your burger. It's going to be great. You're going to get it. And that's that's an embodied frequency of confidence of the manifestation. That which you ordered is on its way. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I want a good burger, right? And the evidence of things not seen. You don't see your burger yet, but you know it's coming. And it does. And so for an agreement to be complete, you have to have faith that it is done. That's it. Come into a session with an open heart, clear of all your issues. We lay, them in, we lay them down. We envision, we articulate, we agree with belief, or we recuse ourselves. And then we have faith that it is done. And that is all that is required. Remember Christ himself. I am telling you, if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, good, bad, or indifferent, it will be done for you. And I believe it. And let me tell you, tonight was really outstanding. I mean, I it was so good. <laughs> I mean, it was it's the kind of stuff that I want to do more of. You know, I, I want to be able to cultivate, create communities where we're doing this kind of stuff because it, it begins and it ends with us. Honestly, why do you think you came to the planet? And if you don't think you can affect, it's, here's my issue with people. They don't get how powerful they are. They really don't. Now, and the thing is, when you and I enter into an agreement, it's an escalation, an amplification. It gets to the universe's ears faster, and the universe begins to cook that cheeseburger, and it gets to your table faster when you and I agree upon it. But I don't have to have anybody with me to make a holy agreement. I don't have to have anybody with me to make a holy agreement. I, as I am divine I am. I am a creator. Amen. That's who I am. Are you kidding? I was created by the creator of all things, and I was created in perfection and full power, full glory. And then me and source, the I am that I am and source, we said, let us make man in our image. Let's play. Let's go create this universe with all these dimensions and the third dimension and earth. And let's send ourselves over there to experience. But we never stopped being creators. You can't stop being a creator. You can trick yourself, though, into thinking you can't create. You can trick yourself, though, into feeling like a victim. You can trick yourself, though, into, into believing that you're stuck. I mean, that's your prerogative. But you're not. But you're not. I am already that. That which you seek to be. If you can feel yourself to be already that, then that is what you become. That's how it works. Boy, I love to see the mechanics of that in process. I'm hyped up. Hey, as I said, I'm back to talk about the next Holy Agreements session. Right now we are planning for one session a month. And the next one will be in early January 2022. You have to know the Zoom link in order to attend. And in order to have a Zoom link, you have to be part of my private podcast community, uh, which is the Life Magnetics Group. It is not the Light Shine Lab. The Light Shine Lab has about 10,000 people, but the podcast community for Life Magnetics has about a little less than 200. 
And that is where I am currently sharing the link to join. And right now it's good that we keep it small um, or more intimate, but if and when we grow, we can start to create some additional infrastructure. I think what I want to do, because not everybody wants to be on Facebook, I don't even want to be on Facebook. <laughs> I don't like it that much. But I think what I want to do is maybe create a mailing list or a WhatsApp group. I don't know what you guys want to do, but a way to stay connected. And if it's a mailing list, this isn't a list to you know, barrage you with all kinds of uh, minutia that you don't want to hear about. It would just be about uh, the, the meetings. Um, I might do that. I might do uh, something different, maybe have a separate site uh, with with meeting information, maybe membership site. I don't know. Again, it's co completely free, but right now we're just beginning. So for right now, if you want to join the next one, the best thing to do is sign up uh, for the Life Magnetics podcast group on Facebook. The other thing you can do is write to my assistant, her name is Stephanie. You can write her at admin at lightworkerslab.com, admin at lightworkerslab.com. Just let Stephanie know that you watch me on YouTube and that you're very interested in attending the next Holy Agreement session. And then she can get you that information on how you can participate. But just I want to say that um, I'm only, I only want people who have a heart for this kind of thing, conscious creation. Uh, this is not a, a group where it's this is just a, this is not a superficial group this is a holy group like don't come into it being disrespectful don't come into it uh, with any other attitude or mindset other than connecting with God through community and manifesting that's all we're doing and I'm serious about it if I just want everybody to be as serious about it as I am and so if you're interested those are the ways to attend I would love to see you, especially those of you that I've really never gotten to know before. But I invite you because this is a cool thing that's happening and maybe you should be a part of it.